Greetings, Captains. I am Wizard, and thank you for being here. In this video, I am going to cover every step of how I set up a very profitable Vitinium mine uh, early in the game. Minor spoiler warning for this one. I didn't give up anything significant, but there may still be small things that you pick up on. So just be warned. So at level 14, with these skills, I was able to use this outpost to make 100,000 credits per sale run. No time to waste, let's get into it. So you've started your new playthrough and beaten the prologue part of the game. Now it's time to make your character. Pick your preset face, customize your body, and sculpt your face and change your hair, every bit of your character. Uh, to your heart's content. Get to something that you like and it's time to pick your background. I like Bounty Hunter for the piloting skills that it gives you and I chose Alien DNA, Taskmaster, and Wanted. Bet you were expecting a quiet job compared to your last gig. Bounty Hunter turned Space Miner. Now follow Lynn outside and get your very first look at this hunk of junk. Don't worry, we're going to fix this thing and our outpost is going to help us do it. Now let's go over the skills that we're going to need before we get into the missions. Number one, you want two ranks in medicine. You're going to need three ranks in astrodynamics, one rank in botany, four ranks of scanning, two ranks of outpost engineering to eventually get to planetary habitation. Now, planetary habitation is what we need to make our outpost at the second location, and that is the ultimate goal here. When you first come to New Atlantis, don't forget to sell all your loot, and then you're going to go to the lodge. Here we are, the Lodge. Talk to everybody first, but when you're done, find this door in the entryway to the building and go down to the basement. Number one, down here are all your crafting benches. And if you go past that room and make a right into the second room, this is the best spacesuit you're going to find for a long time in the game. Position yourself so you can see in the little gap between the door and the frame. And when that mannequin highlights, loot that spacesuit. And when you're done with that, don't forget to recruit Vasco to be crew on your ship. It might be beneficial to go over exploration outpost development. And when you're done there, you need to complete the old neighborhood with Sarah Morgan, where you go and talk to Commander John. Another space explorer. When you're done, talk to Sarah again at the Lodge to complete the mission. Next, we need to complete Into the Unknown. That's going to take us out to the Eye to talk to Vladimir. When you're done talking to Vlad, there's another step of Into the Unknown. And if you happen across any space combat or hostiles, best to try to avoid them for now. Frontier sucks. Next is another step of Into the Unknown. Talk to Vlad and he's going to send you to check out this scanner anomaly. When you're done there, head back Please. to the lodge. Please there. Into the Unknown will lead into the Power From Beyond missions. Make sure you do all of those that you have, especially the one that doesn't have a planet after the title. Then we need to do Back to Vectera to rescue Barrett and the empty nest to help out Sam Co. Because it's pretty apparent he needs some kind of help. And once he feels better, you need to do the UC Vanguard quests. First one is Supra et Ultra. You need to talk to John again to start this one. When you're done with that, you gotta go talk to John again. And this is where he swears you in. Now, raise your right hand. Cool. Then you need to go talk to the crew chief. Ah, you are new probationary then? 
Drew Chief Herath, pleasure to be working with you. And this is where you start the mission Grunt Work. And when you're done with this, you'll have the UC Vanguard exclusive ship modules unlocked. When you're done with that mission, you need to go back to Mast and talk to Commander Tuala to complete the mission. And he will express his gratitude for your efforts. Holy shit! And now we're done with missions. Let's go build our first outpost. After completing those missions, you should be around level 13. And we should have one rank of outpost engineering because we need to build five outpost modules to unlock rank 2. That's the next skill we're going to get. You should also go and research manufacturing 1 and robots 1. And when you're ready, our first outpost is going to be in Narian on the moon Androphon. It orbits Sumati. Once you arrive, scan the planet so you can see where the resources are. And what we need to find out is what terrain type these resources are present on. So when you click on them, it'll tell you. So this is beryllium and it's present in the craters. Iron is in the mountains. So that tells us we need to find the border between craters and mountains to give us the highest chance of finding all the materials we need at one outpost location. You know you have a good spot when you land and you can see two distinct terrain types. In the background over there you can see the mountains that are more pale and cool tone whereas where we're standing right now is in the craters and it's much more brown and, and rocky and sandy. So now we need to run over to that border and we're gonna search along that border for a location that's got all the minerals, all the resources that we need. This is probably the most time-consuming part of this process. Um, if you get lucky and get it at the first spot, that's awesome. Uh, in my case, I had to jump around a few times. Now, eventually, you will find a good spot that's got all four of your resources. And once you get there, it's a good idea to move the beacon around a bit to get a sense of where the veins are. And you want to be in the middle of uh, kind of a zone that you've determined has all the resources will give you the best chance once you've got that you can plant this beacon down and use your extractors to check and see how much of the veins are available now here we have a ton of helium a ton of aluminum we have a little bit of beryllium we don't need much of it but we have some and that's the bare minimum amount of iron that you need but we can easily make this work so we're gonna stay here and depending on how many materials you have available um, try to at first build your iron and your aluminum extractors uh, you don't need the helium right away that's gonna come into play in the next part of our outpost guide so once you have your extractors placed they need power and the game tells you in the bottom right how much power you need. On this planet, the solar arrays produce six power each. And eventually, we're going to have two more extractors here. So we're going to put down 30 power right now if we can. And now that our extractors are running, they need somewhere to put their materials so we can start to stockpile them. Now again, I'm limited on resources for building storage. So I'm going to build just two for the iron and two for the aluminum to get us started. Iron and aluminum are the raw materials you need to build adaptive frames and adaptive frames and iron and aluminum together are the most basic materials needed for crafting more of this stuff in your outpost. Now once we have our storages built we need to connect our extractors to our storage units. So you're gonna highlight the extractor and on Xbox pull the right trigger and that will create an output link from the extractor and in this case we're sending both of these to the first storage unit and then you need to connect the two storage units together 
that will send all of the materials along a chain to the end. This is how you fill up multiple containers from multiple extractors into a single bank of uh, material storage. Once you have everything connected, you need to put down an industrial workbench. This is where you make more adaptive frames for building more stuff. It's also a good idea to build a landing pad with Shipbuilder early. This makes it much easier to land your ship and get back to your ship, uh, especially when you're carrying an excessive amount of materials from your outpost. Once I have the landing pad, I like to go close to the staircase for that and build HAB units. But in this case, we also need to unlock the second rank of Outpost Engineering so that we can then unlock the first rank of Planetary Habitation. So we need to place five of these um, HAB modules down and we will be able to unlock that skill. Sleep for 24 hours. Go to your workbench and build at least a hundred adaptive frames, but don't use all of your iron and aluminum yet. We still need some of that. Now go back to your storages and build ten storages for each uh, iron and aluminum. We need to use this to level our character up to 14 so we can unlock planetary habitation. Don't forget to give your aluminum its 10 storages and make sure you connect everything. Now we need to sleep again to let our bigger storages fill up. Now we want to build a transfer container this is going to let us extract all of our stored resources from one location instead of running over to the storages ourselves. Makes it much easier to get the things that you need. And then we need to hook this up to our storage banks. So once you have it built, go to the end of your storage, uh, your cargo uh, chain, and connect the end of your cargo chain to the transfer container module. Once they're connected, you can walk straight up to the transfer container and take everything out of there. Now at this point I'm rank 13, I need to upgrade outpost engineering and we need to obtain planetary habitation, which we can do now if only we had a skill point. So in, if you run into this case where you just need a skill point, that's what our industrial workbench is for. We don't need much as you can see. So now I'm going to run over, grab my materials that I need to craft, which you don't need to do. They come in virtually. Go to your industrial workbench and craft as many frames as you need until you rank up. And that's what we needed. Got to 14. Now we've got the final skill that we need, Planetary Habitation. This is going to allow us to go to the Dakaran system, wonder if I'm saying that correctly or not, and build our Vitinium mine. To travel to Dakaran, we're first going to need to make several single jumps uh, back to back. And our first one needs to be to the Lunara system. So jump here first. Check where you need to go again. Our next jump is Alpha Murray. After Alpha Murray, we need to hit Heisenberg. And after Heisenberg, we can make our jump to Decaron. And once you're here, you're looking for the moon of Decaron 7 which is Decaron 7B. You can see here there's some hostile activity, so it's likely when we jump there's going to be enemies here, and we may have to grab jump out and then grab jump back in order to land. 
either way once you get here open up your scanner and now we can see the benefit of having the scanning skill at level four uh, if it wasn't for that we wouldn't be able to see the vitinium deposits on the surface and since the surface of Decaron 7b is all craters there's no way for us to guess by using the terrain type where we need to land so just try to find an area that's got helium and vitinium touching because we definitely need those two and just like before we're gonna get out our scanner open up our outpost beacon and start running around trying to find a location that's got all the materials that we need now, I had to make several different landings uh, to find the right place to put down our second outpost and it may for you as well but keep trying and be patient and you'll find the right spot at minimum at this location we want vitinium and helium that's what we really need if you can get iridium also that's a bonus uh, we're gonna be getting plutonium and uranium at a different location later find your vitinium vein and put down six extractors build your landing pad and make sure you don't cover any of your resource veins now our vitinium extractors need power so let's go over here and build solar arrays of course each one of those needs five and on Decaron 7b these only make two power we're gonna have to buy some copper because we're not producing any even though at Anderfon we've got beryllium and aluminum being produced so we're good there but if you need to go and buy any materials I would go to Aquila City to Shepherds and to Midtown Minerals at this point you probably want to research manufacturing 2 it's gonna give us bigger storages so we can hold more vitinium now I found after doing one sale run with 45 of these that we are going to need a hundred and five of these medium storage units so go ahead and start placing them I like doing banks of 15 of these um, to me you know I don't know that's just what I did obviously you can arrange them however you wish um, but I did find that you need a hundred and five of these ones uh, to make a hundred thousand credits in one sale run so once you've got your hundred and five storages uh, organized however you wish make sure you get them all connected and then connect them to your transfer container next to your landing pad over there now if you haven't figured it out already when you're connecting storages you can kind of tell which ones are connected by whether or not they glow when you grab one to connect now it is helpful as you can see there I missed one and it immediately told me I have seen issues with this uh, it's not always right sometimes it misrepresents but um, this is one way you can diagnose if you have connection issues within your storages now here as well we want to build a hab so that we can have a safe place to sleep because this planet has an extreme environment and we can actually gain afflictions by being outside here for too long so go ahead and place your hab and get a bed in there so that we can sleep um, to build up our storages and when you're done with that this is what we end up with we've got a very large bank of storage units just for our vitinium that we're going to be selling um, again 105 of these will net you 100,000 credit profit from each sale run that you complete view from above again we have these six vitinium extractors and all the storages next to them those are connected to the transfer container and, and as long as you've got everything right at this point you can go and take a little nap about time you woke we have things to do again anyway when you're awake 
Go and collect all of your vitinium from your transfer container. It takes a minute, but this is a good thing. This is all your credits. And that gives us 7,185 vitinium. Now we need to go and sell it. Now to sell this stuff in bulk, you should go to the wolf system and visit the den. It's a very short walk to sell it and considering we're carrying so much of it, we don't want to go far. So come around the corner here and you'll find the trade authority. Go and talk to Marcel and here you can see that amount of vitinium is worth a little over a hundred thousand credits total. So get it down to just under 11,000. That's all that you can sell at one time. But the reason we came here is because there are seats literally right next to his shop. So once you're done with round one, come over here and have a seat and wait for 48 hours to reset Marcel's inventory. Now after you've done this, enough times you will have gotten yourself down to uh, less than you know his maximum inventory you sell off that last little bit and you're done you've made a hundred thousand credits and this is with no commerce skill only the skills that we have in the science tree as well as the skills from the bounty hunter background and that's it that is how you can start making loot tons of credits by level 14 I got myself up to 200,000 with this so that I can turn this turd into something that's worth flying we're gonna build this ship in the next video but for now I will leave you with some combat footage as an appetizer thanks for watching I appreciate all of your support have a great day